Hey everybody, this is Christian and today we'll talk about getting started in tech in 2025. What tips do I have to share as a guy who is working now in the professional IT for over 15 years? Oh my God, that really sounds like I'm getting old. But hey, at least I can tell from my own experience that the tech industry is an absolutely beautiful and exciting place to work. And it's also well paid, which might be the reason why so many people want to work in tech. However, you might have noticed that we're currently facing rough times, even in the tech industry. We are all affected by global challenges like politics and companies are consolidating. Everybody is panicking about AI is taking over our jobs and people are generally more more worried working in the tech industry than it was before. Still, I would say it is a fantastic job and it's still worth getting into tech, but it might not be as easy as it was a few years ago. Let me tell you my personal story, how I got started and what actions I'm going to take in my IT career. Hope it's going to be inspiring to you. For today's video, I'm partnering with Triple Ten, the only bootcamp in the US that provides unlimited externship opportunities even after graduation. We'll talk about them in a minute. I've recently been using their program to learn new skills that hopefully will become more useful in my future career. But first of all, I want to give everybody some general tips on how to get started in tech in 2025 if you are not currently working in such a role and you are seeking insights from someone who has started in the tech industry with no prior knowledge and who hasn't studied information technology. So after finishing school and doing some shitty jobs like working in a call center, which was the most horrible work experience I ever had, I finally decided to quit that and do a three years apprenticeship in IT system integration, which is in Germany a system that is half time spent at school where you're learning stuff there theoretically, and half time spent working in a real company getting your first hands-on experience. This is how I got started in tech in a typical entry-level position working as an IT service technician, but where I definitely learned a lot about professional IT in a very short time period because I was suddenly forced to jump on customer calls or go on site to companies and set up basic IT stuff like installing programs on desktop computers, uh, sometimes upgrading PCs or also administering servers or setting up a small company network. Not to forget fixing printers, which I honestly absolutely hated, but yeah, you always have to do some kind of task that you don't like. But overall, I can say that this was really a great start for me. You don't always have to aim for the most advanced role in the industry or study information technology to get started. In fact, the way I see it, I really got the most broad experience and skill set from working in an entry level position position in IT. Yeah, and that is really great if you have no experience and you just want to see all these different fields of the IT industry. An entry-level position like being on help desk or IT service technician, IT system integration like me, this will really get you a lot of good experience to start. And once you get more and more experience, you can walk your way up from there. So start low and progress over time at your own pace. I think this is a great way. And I know a lot of people who have successfully done it this way, just like me, it's not that hard. And this is probably the easiest way to get started, especially for people who haven't worked in such a tech role before and who don't have any qualifications. However, if you're currently working in such a role, you probably have noticed that with this practice, at some point in your career, you will definitely hit a wall because these entry-level jobs are okay to get a foot in the door but if you stay in these roles for too long so more than three four or five years you might end up finding yourself in a place where you don't want to be in especially because these jobs are not always enjoyable and once you reach a certain level in your career your goal should definitely be to specialize in a certain field that really interests you to further progress in your career. For example, you might want to have the goal to become a software developer at some point, or you might be interested in server administration, perhaps the Linux operating system or networking or cybersecurity is also a super interesting and exciting field. This is definitely where it makes sense to take it a bit more serious and prepare and search for a better role that fits your personal strengths and goals. And this is also where you definitely will increase your income drastically. 
However, you might wonder now, well, Christian, that sounds like a good plan, but how do I actually get such an advanced job in IT? How do I become a software engineer or a cybersecurity expert? So this is where Triple Ten comes into play, which is a platform for online education. They offer flexible, beginner-friendly online bootcamps with the highest graduation and employment rates in the industry, like software engineering, cybersecurity, data science, and so on. If you're unsure about your ideal career path, then just visit Triple Ten's website via the link in the description or scan the QR code to try a free career consultation with their tutors or take a career quiz to just explore the different tech professions. So it is always good to have a clear goal and a vision of what is your career path that you want to take? And what I really like about Triple Ten is that it is very special and different from these other offerings that just try to sell you more trainings. Their focus is actually to get you in the job. They even have a money back guarantee. So if it takes you more than 10 months after completing the program to get a job that you trained for, they get you a 100% refund, which I think is a pretty fair deal. And with over 1,100 graduates employed, 82% found a job within six months of graduation, even though 80% didn't have any technical background. So that's extremely impressive and very compelling numbers with top ratings from their graduates. They also have really impressive companies on their portfolio where their graduates get hired. Of course, many of them are remote positions. So I think if you're really looking for a bootcamp that improves your career, Triple Ten is a great choice and the learning platform is amazing. As I said before, I'm currently taking myself a software engineering course there, which focuses on real world projects. So this is not just some theoretical stuff. You have an interactive and flexible learning experience, so you can just walk through these lessons at your own pace. And I more I use these lessons and the bootcamp, I really appreciate the program because in the past I've taught myself many different skills and things by just by myself, yeah, by watching YouTube videos or by doing my own projects and trial and error. Just take my Docker and Kubernetes tutorials as an example. So this is nothing I knew before I started the YouTube channel five years ago. It's all self-taught with the help of some real world experience that I've just gotten from my current role in tech. Sure, it is a practice that somehow works, but I can tell you from my own experience, it takes a lot of time to learn and understand it all by yourself. And it's exhausting, especially if you're looking for an advanced role that is out of scope of your current experience and responsibilities. So for example, I'm currently working in cybersecurity. I haven't worked in an engineering or development role, but because I have been currently involved into some interesting projects in the company I'm working for where I need some software engineering skills, this is nothing I have really a lot of experience with. So this is definitely where you sometimes need some support and mentoring to learn all the stuff that you need to know effectively. Just take a quick look at the engineering course and some of the topics that I'm currently learning here. So first it starts with with some basic HTML and CSS. So these are things that I already knew before. So I walked through these lessons pretty quickly, but then it really goes on with some advanced stuff like JavaScript, object-oriented programming, frameworks and APIs. There's so much valuable stuff in it. Of course, I'm still not finished with all of the courses because it takes many, many hours to go through them all. However, I just want to say this is actually a good thing because if it was so easy, everybody could just do it. So I'm glad that this this isn't just a few hour course or training. This is really a full bootcamp that definitely it can take a few months until you complete everything. But I think if it helps you to find a job or get hired in a position you really want to be in, this time is well invested. And now I personally don't know if I ever want to become a software developer myself, but still, as you can imagine, I have some plans for using these skills and why I'm going through this course. Just like I told you, I'm currently involved into some projects in the company I'm working for where I just need to learn a bit about programming and where it really becomes more important to me, especially to build my future skill set when I'm working with software engineering teams or product managers, solution architects. I just need to speak the same language that these people do and it will get me in a better position working in the company. Which brings me to another important point that I want to emphasize here because whenever you're learning a new skill or you're studying for a new role that you want to be in, it is super important to have a clear vision or a project that you really want to accomplish with these skills. So for me, 
It is to understand software development better, which will help me in my main job with working on some projects and maybe get a better position in the company I'm working for. And I just can tell you from my own experience, if you don't have such a project where you can apply and use all these skills that you're learning, it will be so hard for you to stay motivated, yeah? Because everybody is lazy, yeah? And you will lose motivation over time if you don't have a specific goal that you are following. It doesn't have to be a big project, but if you want to become a software developer, it would be great to create your own maybe free and open source project to train and use these skills in an interesting way or develop a small application or a website. Or if you want to become a cybersecurity expert, why not set up your own virtual servers in your home lab, try to find and exploit vulnerabilities on them, learn how to fix them. That would be some really cool project ideas. And this is also where you really can get real hands-on experience and have something to add to your personal portfolio or resume, which is also great and helps you to get in a better position. Because uh, when I would try to apply for a new job, for example, I would just refer to my personal GitHub profile where I've now collected almost over 10k followers and show some of the projects that I've accomplished over the last years, like all of the boilerplates templates and my home lab deployments and automation scripts that I have been creating and sharing with everybody on GitHub or the home lab videos yeah, showing the YouTube channel and all the stuff that I have accomplished. By the way, Triple Ten has also a cool approach in that field. Yeah, They give students some hands-on experience through externship with real companies, helping students to build job-ready portfolios by solving real industry problems. So you really get some valuable experience experience here. And if you are applying for a new role, you already have some practical experience which gives you an edge in the job market. And this is, by the way, what I will predict will change in the industry and will become super important in any tech role in the next years. Because of some of the recent challenges we are facing with AI and automation and all of this stuff, yeah? So I think with the rise of AI, if you want to be successful in tech in 2025 and onwards, you have to even further specialize and build real-world experience to build a competitive skill set that sets you apart from others. Yes, there probably will be some layoffs in some spaces where these lazy type of workloads are still done by humans. For example, I'm thinking about people that just write generic code or adding simple functions to programs or documenting stuff that AI can now do fully automatic. Also, people in tech support are probably also going to suffer because these basic level questions now can all be done by AI. So why do you need a first level supporter somewhere? Which sounds pretty dramatic. And yeah, that probably might go a bit against getting in an entry level position here. But as I told you guys, getting an entry level position is just to get a foot in the door. So you really have to move on. Because when you think about it, there will always be some work for real humans in a company. At some point, AI just cannot do it. And I just want to give you some very specific examples for this. Someone has to develop and integrate AI models into actual business use cases. So you can't just throw an AI model in and expect it to have the exact outcome that you want to produce. So somebody has to write this logic or has to create the concept for it. And also another good use case for tech support people you definitely don't want to have an AI model jump onto an enterprise customer call and explain the value of your products to a potential customer. So this is where you will never trust an AI model. This is where you always want to have a senior support engineer or a software developer joining this customer call and building trust and a relationship with your customers, right? And this is why I say there will always be work where you have to trust humans and where I think human interactions and human soft skills will become more valuable. I even think that these soft skills and learning how to communicate with other people and working in a team, these type of soft skills will become more valuable with the evolution of AI, not less important. So I definitely don't see this evolution as pessimistic as others do. I definitely think it will hurt people that are working in these basic entry-level positions for too long, but there will always be opportunities for advanced IT roles to be successful. So don't be 
afraid of jumping into the tech industry in 2025 just because of AI. This would be completely silly. And this is where we are coming back to the beginning of the video where I explained an entry level position is great to get a foot in the door, but you have to move on and you have to constantly learn new things to stand out from others and just deliver a better result and outcome than AI could do. So that's really the reason why I'm always learning new stuff for my tech uh, career, currently software development. So I can add one more skill set to my portfolio at some point. And I hope this video helped you a bit and hopefully motivated you to finally get in the tech industry in 2025 if you're not already working in it, despite all the challenges that we're facing right now. And please don't stop learning, even if you are already working in tech. And to make the progress even a bit more enjoyable, you can use the code CHRISTIAN to get 30% of all Triple Tense programs and save up to $3,400 for your education. So check it out. Link is in the description box down below or scan the QR code for a free career consultation. Thanks everybody for watching. A huge thanks goes out to all of my supporters and YouTube members. You guys are amazing. And I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.